Here's what you've been missing over at patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Oh, exactly. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is take two of an episode that we tried to do many moons ago, um, and this was in the early days of our uh, computer issues, but actually, no, it wasn't the computer's fault. It was the board's fault, and it was, it was uh, my fault for, uh, I was overtaxing the board that day, and I forget, you know, that the board is uh, actually a computer, and uh, like a regular uh, PC, Eric, you know, you need the to- The board uh, has feelings, too, man. It has feelings, too, and you need to reset it every once in a while. Because it gets tired, and then what ends up happening is you have a two and a half hour long show, and you go to listen to it, and everybody sounds like a robot. Yeah, it was awful. It, it was. Really was. It was very disappointing. It was terrible. And so we have to uh, do it again, which is even worse because I don't remember what we talked about. And uh, so it's basically <laughs> like we never did it. But anyway, it was here only like we are. five months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was something. It was like beginning of winter, I think, wasn't it? it was December. In, in yeah. December, yeah. 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 It's been a minute. We uh, we have on the phone, not on the phone, on the show with us today, Pete Herman and Chris Army. Everybody knows Chris Army. Uh, he's been on the show uh, several times already now, Chris, right? Yeah. yeah. And Pete, uh, you might know the name. You might not know the name. Uh, he's one of those guys, kind of forgettable, you know? <laughs> very, very forgettable. <laughs> Just teasing you. It's the best way to introduce him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really You're going to love him. He's very forgettable. Uh, no, but you, you run a Facebook page. Uh, called Aspiring Licensed Battlefield Guides, correct? Correct, yep. Created it out of your own uh, genius. Sweat and toiled all by yourself um, and got this thing off the ground. You got, what, like four over 4,000 uh, followers? 2,500. 25, well, you should have stuck with 4,000. Yeah. Um, okay, so you got 2,500 followers. And um, it, it, now, is, it, is that... 2,500 people who want to take the guide exam, or you think most people are just interested in Gettysburg? I think it's actually a lot of people who want to take the guide exam. Yeah. I think really? there are, there, in that 2,500 though, there's a lot of people who are already guides, like Chris, and uh -huh. a lot of people who are also licensed battlefield guides that interact with the page and help us out with stuff. Right, okay. I'm going to ask you a favor. Just get right up to that yep. microphone. Right Thank you very much. Phone. Very kind of you. Uh, and Chris, so you uh, you get in there. Let me uh, Let me ask you this. When you first see it, uh, or first saw it, did you think, oh, what's this hooey? <laughs> um, I better follow this and see what uh, yeah. this person is up see to. What or, he's up to. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, I, I think one of our colleagues um, was was involved with it um, for quite a while as he was studying for the guide exam. Okay. And, and I'm sure we'll get into the history of it. Uh, sure. Because we got to cover two and a half hours. Is that what you said? <laughs> well, oh, man. that's what it was last time. But I don't think we talked much about this I stuff. Say, I think what we, did we talk yeah. for two and a half hours about? Yeah, I don't think it was all this. I think it was just storytelling <laughs> time. Yeah, for like two and a half hours. <laughs> could be. Yeah, it that basically could be. was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, part of it's it's driven by the fact that um, you know many of us uh, once we've become guides. Um, because people helped us along the way, we, we want to look for ways to help others. So, uh, um, you know, that's that's part of the fun in it. What exactly do you do to help? Like, do you guys get together for anything, or is it all just basically online where everybody's just commenting about a certain topic? Are you asking me? You're asking me. Either one of you. Of I looked at both of you. That means either one can answer. Either one can answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, at first, it started with, uh, like, trivia type stuff. Right. Uh, and the, the person that, that Chris was referring to was a uh, licensed battlefield guy, Chris Bagley. Okay. Uh, he was the horseman of Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. uh, horseman? Yep. Still he is, is a, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. He has uh, a horse here. He does. Lucky. He, he likes to do the horse tours. And uh, before he was a, a licensed battlefield guide, he helped us out on the page. He, he pretty much ran it for several years while he was studying. And he would often put questions up for the group or... Uh, interesting facts and stuff like that, and and he pretty much got it to where it is today yeah. as far as uh, the amount of the amount of followers we have and stuff like that. But uh, we took it from that, and in the last year, I've had the idea of incorporating like group studies. And in the fall, it was October, Chris? Mm -hmm. Yep. We had a group of about 35, mm -hmm. 35 to 40 people, uh, and we spent eight hours on the field with Chris. Uh, and we went over all day one stuff and a lot of questions on the guide exam and stuff like that. So we're hoping to expand on that stuff in the, in the coming years and however long it takes until every one of us passes the guide exam. Might I suggest that you uh, recommend people come to our uh, monthly tours as well? Yep, uh, and I've given you guys lots of shout outs. I haven't seen you at any of them. Yep. 
not been there. I, yeah. I refuse to go. You <laughs> might suggest that, yeah. I don't blame you. I refuse to go, he says. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, no, that's good. So it's like a little uh, community. See, the I, I really wish it wasn't on Facebook, though, because I can't bring myself to go on Facebook and and, uh, and participate in things. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. Yeah. I mean, it's really good for stuff like this. Sure. Where you can you get people in the community, but... Oftentimes, I just need a break and take a couple of weeks off Facebook myself. But yeah. Luckily, I can like delete my personal Facebook and still keep the, they call it business. Oh, you I, can do that? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you needed to have your personal to have a, a business. <gasps> nope. You can delete your Oh, I your can personal. finally get rid of it. Yep. Oh, my God. That's There's a great. light bulb going on <laughs> in your head. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. You can also keep Messenger as well. You can delete oh, like, the Facebook app. That spies on you. I don't well, I, can't, I keep in contact with a lot of people like Chris via Facebook Messenger. Oh, see, yeah, see. I never go on it. I have it on my phone still, but I never really use it. And then I go and I look at it once in a while and I miss like 13 messages from people and it's like, my mom died. And I'm like, oh, God, it was three months ago. So I feel bad, but uh, you know you can't win them all. Boy, way to bring the, the, yeah. the whole group down. Here, Matt. <laughs> Sorry about your mom, buddy. Um, so the um, uh, uh, when 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 uh, what is the latest, Chris, on when they're going to give the test? Um, well, we don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but the last thing that I heard was December twenty twenty one, but well, then. I'm hearing maybe so, not. So there's a couple things that drive it. Number one that drives it is the uh, amount of visitation that's happening. Of course, last year's visitation, <laughs> as we all know, there yeah. was some reason that it was lower. I don't remember why. Um, so you know that's that's one driving factor. Um, the other driving factor is the amount of guides that currently are active guiding. Uh -huh. and, uh, so you know that's part of the equation. And so the National Park Service takes a look at all of that. Says, now, didn't last year make a lot of guides not become active because they didn't want to uh, get the Rona? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The the um, uh, last year, you know, uh, and this is insider information. Okay. Shh. You know, uh, yeah. uh, the guides were told that uh, you know, based on our comfort level with guiding, if we were not comfortable guiding that uh, that we didn't have to in order to meet the minimum numbers that are typically required. Okay. Um, so that's that's how the park was working with us to try to you know respond to what was going on with the lower visitation, um, you know, and, and so on. Because the minimum amount of tours in, in a normal year, uh, the minimum amount of tours that that guides have to do, um, they have to do those to maintain their license. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, last year you know you have to kind of erase that one from the. Uh, uh, from the equation, yeah. But uh, based on what I've seen with visitation so far this year, uh, it's it's picking up, which is good news. Yeah, yeah. Just the other day, I guess it was it must have been last weekend, but like town was packed. Yeah. Oh, because there was a reenactment. I think that might have been why. Uh, it just seems that uh, as soon as the nice weather hit, yeah, you know, for a couple weekends in a row, that uh, everybody wants to come out and get out and do something. And the joke's on them because it was cold and cloudy that day. <laughs> but still, it's better than like yeah. frigid yeah. in the winter time. So com I was just going to say, combined with that, Matt, we we've uh, I think over the last year or so, I know that we've lost a, at least five guides that have passed away. Yes, uh, not all of them fully active, um, but uh, um, you know that that goes into the equation as well. Um, because in order to be able to serve the visitors and serve the customers, we have to have you know a, a number of, of guides, a, a you know minimum level of guides, to be able to to do all the tours that are requested. How does uh, I mean social media obviously helps in a lot of ways. This is a good example of it here uh, with uh, your page. Um, but how does it also kind of hurt guiding, or is, does it hurt guiding? Uh, you know, I I don't know that I've uh, I've come down on that question one side or the other yet because I think there's times when I really feel like, you know, it it, it helps to have the conversations. Yeah. Um, where I think it impacts is that, um, you know, it, it uh, it's an outlet for information that now all of a sudden you have a lot of experts, quote unquote, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. may be be getting answers from some people that are not. Uh, um, you know, experts, licensed battlefield guides, or or true experts or historians, right? On it, so it, it can impact that some. Are you talking about people that call themselves historians and and go out there and they're not technically historians or not any way bona fide, but they have like a, a gimmick in their appearance or something? 
It, it could be. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it, it really depends. I mean, yeah. the, the nice thing about hiring a licensed battlefield guide is is the test that you have to go through, um, which I know you've talked about on your show and, and, and that. And, uh, um, you know, the fact that uh, there is some licensing agency, in this case, the Department of the Interior, that, uh, you know, puts people through their paces so that, yeah, they, they know that you understand um, all the different materials and nuances of this battle. Hmm. So uh, uh, when a visitor goes out with you, um, you know, they, they can be assured that uh, you've been tested as far as your knowledge level. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and your presentation style as well. It, you know, I, I find it very uh, frustrating when I talk to uh, tourists and, you know, being doing the bike tours and being in the in the bus lot of the visitor center. I get a lot of people coming up thinking that we are the visitor center. And so they ask us for general information and things like that. And, you know, that's it's, an, it's annoying, this, but we give it to the them. Visitor center? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this shed wow. is the visitor center. No, studio. <laughs> yeah, studio. I'm sorry. This I'm studio. in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in the wrong place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, but no. So I have uh, you know, I I tell them they ask me what to do, and uh, sometimes they'll ask you know a, a bike tour. You know, they want to do it, but it's like they miss the one that we sent out for the day. So. I'm like, yeah, you know, if you're here tomorrow, we could do it. No, we're just here for the day. What do we do? And they got a map in their hand. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it angers me when they say, oh, we'll just use the map. And I go, no, you're missing out. Like, you're going to get the bug, but not from the map. Like, you got to get, you have to have a licensed battlefield guide. And they don't know what the hell it is. Like, they, because we're, we're like the only one that has it. I mean, you know, successfully, like traditionally, we, Gettysburg yeah. is the only one that has a licensed battlefield guide thing. Right. right. So, um, but they're not used to that going to other national parks and they don't understand all the nuances between a military park and a national battlefield and a national park and all that jazz, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so when they hear about it, they're very intrigued and, you know, I don't know how many people actually take my advice and go up to the visitor center and book one, but uh, I know that, you know, they it seems like I sell them on the idea of getting a guide. And I, I think it's important that people come here and do it with a guide. I mean, would you agree, Pete? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, you really, like, the first time you came here, did you get a guide or did you just go alone? Uh, I don't think I got a guide. You were a kid? I was, like, seven. Yeah. How come you didn't hire a guide? Yeah, here? really. Well, I, <laughs> I came... You drove yourself all the way here and you didn't get a guide? What's There's wrong a, with you? A, a funny story. My, my earliest Gettysburg memory is being seven years old. It was the 125th anniversary. Uh, we came in a pop-up camper that we borrowed from a family friend. It was 120 degrees and there was a drought. And I just remember it being so dry and dusty. But the coolest yeah. thing in the camper next to us was a Confederate reenactor. I thought he was going to say a licensed battlefield guy. <laughs> yeah, that would have <laughs> made sense. <laughs> Maybe he was a licensed battlefield guy. Oh, I, I didn't true. know about it. Yeah. Maybe he was. Yeah. But the Confederate reenactor, and what did he do? He and had, you're in the camper. Yeah, he had a gun. Uh -huh. Oh, that was, yeah. So, yeah, that's like the coolest that thing. That was the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah. As a seven-year-old. No, I hear you on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was uh, clearly not... Um, Concerned with uh, being accurate, correct? Because he was in a camper, right? But now, so what does that have to do with a guide? Is that just your memory from your first memory. trip? Yes, okay, gotcha, first gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but I didn't. When I came back again as an adult, uh, I did uh, get a guide. I actually had a, a family friend who was a, a guide by that point, and I came down on a, a van trip with him, and he showed me around, and we went to. The 150th PA monument out okay. of McPherson's Ridge. Yeah. And then we went to the Pennsylvania monument and I saw a name on there and I'm like, well, that's my mom's maiden name. I wonder if that's oh, relation. Oh, okay. So then I did a little research and it turns out it's like my eighth great uncle or something, really? something crazy like that. No, that's cool. And then I got, then I got hooked. Got the bug. You yep. got the bug. How about you, Chris? Uh, as far as first time? Bug. Yeah. Uh, when you got uh, the, yeah. Well, when you got well, the bug. My, whenever that my was. grandfather, um, took me here uh it was about the same age about seven you know um um he would he would make a circuit from massachusetts and that circuit would be gettysburg uh -huh. over to lancaster for uh -huh. his easter ham uh -huh. and then back home 
you know. And every now and then we would go Gettysburg, Lancaster, all the way up to Niagara Falls because he also loved Niagara Falls. Wow. Okay. So, you know, those were our usual uh, spring trips. Sometimes in the fall. Now, how um, how how hard was that in a Conestoga wagon? It was tough. It was tough. <laughs> Catch the rest of this episode and support the show over at Patreon.com/slash Addressing Gettysburg.